Hey, so I have gotten yet another comment on my video that I made updating about what happened between uh, me and Steve, telling me that um, I don't understand Neville Goddard and how if I had just viewed Steve as somebody who was ready to make a commitment that, you know, we would be happily committed right now and everything would be great. And this notion really makes me laugh um, a lot because the way that I see things, the way that I've made things happen in my life, that is not how it works. It doesn't come from changing an external object. It comes from changing you. And if you have a situation like I had with Steve, where I'm essentially in a relationship with somebody and there's a commitment issue there, or there's just a moving forward issue, whatever, um, that's a reflection in my life of me um, that I find myself in that situation. And it's not a reflection of the fact that I'm viewing this person wrongly or that if I spent my effort viewing him differently, then the whole situation would change. This is ludicrous to me because I know that the outside world is only a reflection of your inside world. So. If I had an ongoing issue with people never wanting to commit to me, and I was always in these relationships with people that didn't want to commit, then that probably points to some problem I have with my own self-concept. That I've, I've talked about the things that I have an ongoing repeating pattern with here and what I think they are. Um, what, this, what this situation to me reflects to me, and upon deeper digging, I can see exactly how this person was allowed to be in my life. I don't regret it at all. I love Steve and I'm really glad. I'm really glad we've had the relationship we've had and I hope we have one in the future of some kind. Um, but when I look at how, when I look at all the decisions that I made along the way that relate to Steve, it's pretty obvious to me that the decisions I made stemmed from me not being available to commit to somebody fully. So see how that um, it, it's not when you when you deconstruct it it's so boring like this isn't it's not some magical uh, construct of the universe it's you making choices in your outward life and it's just whether or not you're aware of why you're doing things is is what makes it seem overly magical or not so to illustrate the Steve point um, I've mentioned on this channel that I have an ex who I'm very close with and we broke up five years ago um, and we own a business together. We live a block away from each other. We have a ton of assets together um, and we've kind of provided each other with a sense of security since the day we met. And I'm still trying to work out, and so is he, how we move forward with another person well, you know, we don't, I think that we, especially I, have not figured out how to do that. Um, I still don't, you know, I still don't quite understand how I'm going to have like this really super serious committed thing with somebody else. Um, and uh, still feel like I'm coming through on what I want to provide to this very important other person. And so here's a case study. All right, I met Steve um, right out the gate. The first day, there were signs that he was probably not the right person for me. There were a few comments that were made that raised my eyebrows. I ignored them and continued on because I, I really liked him. Um, he right away told me about some past relationships he was still trying to get over. He right away told me, I'm weird about dating. Uh, I don't jump into anything, you know, all the classic, I'm not going to be the boyfriend that you want. I'm not in a place where like, I'm ready to just move forward if this is good. This was all in the first two days. In fact, I, I uh, was speaking to him via video. I made him a video saying, let's just avoid this whole thing. We're not in the same place. We're not looking for the same thing. Um, let, you know, 
let's just not do this. This is on like the second day I ever knew Steve. Steve gave me all of the information I needed to be able to tell that I would be where I am right now with him in the first two days. But I made choices based on me, uh, based on being afraid that I was getting too old, based on being afraid of being alone for the rest of my life. Um, uh, he, he liked me. He was very kind of complimentary to me about what he knew of me and my self-esteem was in the shitter. And so that felt good and I didn't want to let that go. Um, what else? I don't know, probably a lot of other small things like that. But in the background is this unresolved relationship that I have with my ex where I'm, you know, honestly, I'm committed to him in many ways. I'm committed to continuing to build the things together that we built uh, while we were together, the business, um, our assets, our retirement, all of that. I'm very committed to that. And, you know, I'm also, you know, we've been really good to each other and I'm very committed to um, keeping a good relationship with him. And when he needs something, if it conflicts with me and another person, it's very awkward. And I've tried to make the right choice in that area where like, if, if, if I think that it's too over the line, I, you know, act a certain way, but it's still very murky. So um, it's no surprise that when uh, Steve and I kind of got back to being friends again, that despite the fact that we've never really been friends, including the whole time we were just friends over the last year, it's no surprise to me that I was willing to kind of keep that in my life because it doesn't make the demand on commitment for me that a real partner would. You know, a real partner would essentially uh, either not be interested in me if they're coming from a healthy place because of my relationship with my ex. That would be um, something that raises eyebrows for that person. Or if they were able to get past that or whatever, if we move forward with the relationship, at some point, um, there would be a conflict there between the emotional connection I have with my ex and the emotional connection that I'm trying to form with a person, a new person. So Steve didn't make those demands of me because of where he is about commitment. So the whole thing just kind of worked. It just, that's why it continued and moved forward. That's why it, that's why a year after the initial, you know, meeting, um, we're still around, we're still doing this. It's not because I don't see him the right way. It's because my life isn't the right way. Um, what I want is not in alignment with what my life is. And until those things are fixed, there are gonna be problems. The people that show up are gonna show up and they're not gonna be right. They're not gonna be right in some way. Um, you know, it was the same thing with, with uh, my specific person who texted me last night, by the way. Um, it was the same thing with my specific person. You know, we we dated um, for four months, but I said, let's just not do this after one week. It was already apparent to me that he was not a person that was going to emotionally connect with me in the right way. After one week, after one week, I said, I, I don't think we're coming from the same place. We just shouldn't do this. And like Steve, he had such a like violent emotional reaction to me sort of like trying to exit that I took that, my shitty self-esteem, my worries about time running out, all that. I took that and I said, man, you know, can I really afford to pass up somebody who's reacting this way to me leaving after one week? You know, now I don't have, I don't feel bad about myself. I don't feel unworthy. I don't feel like I'm inherently flawed. I don't feel like um, my time is running out. I don't feel like I had an expiration date and it's passed. Like now that I'm not experiencing un any of that, I've been, I've had several things come up like that in the last six months where I've just been like, no, I, there's no draw. Like it's over. Like you're not right for me. That's it. Um, and same thing with Steve, like Steve is a perfect example of how much I have changed. You know, if this were a year ago, 
given some of the serious, very serious things Steve said to me about how he felt about me and about um, how, you know, ideal the time we spent uh, staying together at my place was for him. A year ago, if I were still desperate, if I were still feeling like my time were running out, I might have said, okay, well, you know, he, he won't commit to me the way I want him to, but um, I can just hang out, you know. No, um, everything in the outside world is just a reflection. And when you spend your time trying to change somebody else's behavior, if you, if you spend your time, if I spent my time thinking about Steve and what Steve's issues are and how I'm going to see him differently and spend all this time in my car driving around going, Steve wants to be with me. Steve wants to commit to me. Steve wants blah, blah, blah. All I'm doing is screwing with the image in the mirror. Um, that's it. All I'm doing is screwing with the image in the mirror. When I have the situation with my ex figured out and I'm fully available to commit to somebody, get married, move forward, when I'm at that place, then either Steve or my specific person who texted me last night, just putting that out there again, or um, <laughs> or another person who is just right for me uh, will show up in my reality and reflect back to me that I am in a place where I'm ready to be committed to. So if you are experiencing something with a specific person, um, If you, if you are wanting a commitment that you're not getting, the best place to start is with you because that person who is not ready or willing to commit to you was brought into your life by you. That person continues to be in your life because of your choice to have them there. This, this idea that we have attachments to people, or that there is just like love that was meant to be. And, you know, so much of this is just psychology. I'm not saying there are no special like people in your life or whatever, but you know, Steve is not a person that was in my life over the last year because of our magical relationship. He's there because I let him be there because he was a match for me. Um, because he reflected to me what's going on with me. His readiness reflected my own readiness and that's why he was allowed to be there. If I were really ready, if that thing, if I really wanted that thing right now, there would be nothing attractive and there is nothing attractive. Note that I am not in that situation anymore. Um, so I, I'm getting pretty close here. Got to figure out the X thing. Um, that was here because I wasn't ready and it's gone now because I don't need that around anymore. I don't need that reflection anymore.